Welcome to Golden Software's video training for Surfer. Surfer is a versatile gridding, contouring, and surface mapping software package. In this video, I will cover how to create base maps, how to edit the base map layer properties, and how to perform simple editing commands on the objects within the base layer. Base maps contain plot images, points, lines, and areas, and are created by importing or downloading files. These files can either be vector files like DXF or shape files, image files like JPEG or TIFF, or ASCII data files. If the file is geo-referenced, it will import with the appropriate real-world map coordinates. To create a new base map, click Home, New Map, Base, and select one of the base map options. Click Base to create a base map by importing a vector or image file. Click Base from Data to create a base map by importing a data file. Click Base from Server to create a base map by downloading imagery or vectors from a WMS server. Or click Empty Base Map to add a base layer without any data. We will click Base to load in a vector file. In the Import dialog, choose one image or vector file or select multiple files by holding Ctrl or Shift on your keyboard and selecting additional files. Then click Open. Each file will open as its own map object. If you want the maps overlaid so they are spatially tied to one another, select both map objects in the contents by holding Ctrl or Shift on your keyboard and clicking Map Tools, Map Tools, Overlay Maps. Surfer draws the layers in the order they are listed in the contents. If a newly added layer is not visible, click and drag it to the top of the list in the contents to change the drawing order. You will see Raster in the default layer name for base layers containing only images. The properties of a base raster layer can be changed by selecting the base raster layer in the contents window. In the properties window on the general tab, you can control how the images look via image properties. Check the box next to set transparent color to choose a specific color to make transparent in the image. Below the Transparency section is the Spatial Extent section. Click Geo-Reference Image to place unreferenced images in the correct relative position to a coordinate system when overlaying multiple map layers. Crop an image by selecting it and clicking Features, Image, Crop. You will see Vector in the default layer name for base layers containing only vector objects. The properties of a vector base layer can be edited by expanding the layers in the contents window to see each of the objects within the layer. In this case, the layer contains polygons for each of the counties of New Hampshire. You can edit properties of the base layer and individual objects within the base layer. To edit the properties of the base layer, select the layer in the contents window. When a base layer is selected, all the object names within the layer are shown in italics and a red arrow appears next to the layer indicating this layer is being edited. All of the properties for the layer are displayed in the Properties window. Click the pin icon to the right of the base map layer to lock the layer for editing. When the base layer is pinned, you can select the objects within a base layer even if it is not the topmost layer in the map. Click the pin again to unlock the layer, allowing you to select other map layers. Changing any of the properties in the Properties window will automatically update the map. The General page contains many generic options. In the Input File section, next to the file name in the Input File field, you can click the Open button to change or reload the file used to create the base layer. And you can click the Save File button to save the file out as a new file. In the Symbology section, you can click the Edit Symbology button to open the Symbology dialog, where you can define properties based on an attribute value. See our Base Symbology training video for more information. In the Properties section, you are presented with the properties that apply to the objects within the layer. Since this layer only contains polygons, we see Line, Fill, and Shadow properties. If our layer contained text objects or symbols, we would also see the font properties and symbol properties. On the Labels page, you can label the objects with an attribute. GSB files like this one, 
MIF files and shape files are just some of the file formats that support these attributes. To label the properties with an attribute, select the type of label from the label source drop-down list. You can choose from any of the attributes, or you can choose to use a template. If you choose to use a template, you can type directly into the field or click the text editor button in the template field to create a template. Templates can display multiple attributes and additional text. Below the template, we can set the position of the labels relative to the polygon center point, the label angle, and the label font properties. Labels can also be moved individually by clicking Map Tools, Edit Layer, Layer Labels and clicking and dragging the labels where you'd like them. Press Escape on your keyboard when finished. The Layer page is where you control the opacity for the entire base map layer. You can adjust the opacity using the slide bar or by typing in a new value. The Coordinate System page displays the coordinate system of the file used to create the base map layer. If the name shown is Unreferenced Local System, the layer does not have a coordinate system associated with it. To manually set the coordinate system or to load in a georeferencing file containing coordinate system information, click the Set button. The Info page displays information about the selected object. For objects in the base map, this information could include length or area measurements or attribute information. The measurements in the geometry section can be displayed in map units or in page units. If you want to change the map units, you can do so in the properties for the map. For the base map layer itself, there usually isn't any information to display here. An object can be deleted from the base layer by selecting it and pressing delete on your keyboard. The properties of an individual object within the base map layer can be edited by selecting the object and then editing the properties on the appropriate page of the properties window. Properties of one object can be easily copied from one to another by selecting the object and clicking Home, Clipboard, Copy Format. Select the other object of interest and click Paste Format. The coordinates for vector objects such as polylines, rectangles, and points can be edited on the Coordinates tab. Attributes for an individual object can be edited by selecting the object and changing the attribute on the info page. You can add an additional attribute by clicking the Add button. Vector objects can be reshaped within the base map layer by selecting the object and clicking Features. Edit Features, Reshape. We can add, move, and copy-paste individual or multiple objects. When multiple objects are selected, their shared properties can be updated simultaneously. To select multiple objects, hold Shift on your keyboard while selecting the objects. Alternatively, in the Contents window, select the first object, then hold Shift, and then click the last object to mass select everything in between. Or, hold Control and click Additional Objects to select just those objects. Once you have the desired object selected, you can move, copy, or update the properties in the Properties window. To add an object to a vector base layer, Select the layer, then click the desired command from the Insert group on the Home tab in the ribbon bar. Then use your mouse to draw the object on the map. Press Escape on your keyboard to exit drawing mode when you're done drawing. To move an object, click and drag it to the desired location. 
Or, if you'd like to copy or move an object within the base layer to another map object or to the plot document, this can be done by selecting an object, then clicking Home, Clipboard, Move Copy to Layer. In the Move Copy Layer dialog, set the destination layer to either the plot document or another map layer. You can also choose whether you'd like to move or copy the selected object. As you can see, the object is now on its own, on the plot document, and not connected to the map object. Objects can also be moved from the plot document to a base map layer. To copy-paste an object, select the object and press Ctrl-C on your keyboard to copy it. Then press Ctrl-V to paste it. It will paste to the center of the screen, so if desired, click and drag to move it. There is also the option to copy and paste the entire base layer within the map frame. For this command, select the base layer in the contents, then click Home, Clipboard, Duplicate. The layer is now duplicated in the same map frame. You can also perform feature editing commands on the object within the layer, such as converting one object type to another, simplifying lines, creating buffer polygons, and combining polygons into a complex polygon. After combining these two polygons into one complex polygon, changing the properties for this one polygon in the Properties window updates both polygons in the Plot window. This concludes the video training for creating and editing base maps in Surfer. For information on querying and using the Attributes table, watch the Querying and Using Surfer's Attribute Table training video. To see how to use the Symbology feature to assign properties to base map objects based on an attribute value, see our base symbology training video. And if you have any additional questions, please contact Golden Software.